Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Intel Arc Pro B. 50. At the time I'm making this video, it's Newegg's best-selling GPU, and basically what we have is Intel's brand new low-profile workstation GPU with 16 gigs of VRAM. This is definitely marketed as a workstation GPU, and a lot of people are picking it up specifically for that, but I wanted to see if we could game on this, because when it comes to low-profile GPUs that we can game on and build small form factor units around, they're kind of few and far in between, so anytime I can get my hands on a low-profile, even a dual-slot low-profile GPU, I definitely want to test it in a smaller form factor unit. It's got a blower-style cooler, doesn't require any extra power, and total board power here is around 70 watts, but while using it, we're only going to see maximum draw of around 55 watts in total from this card. Either way, I'm still really excited about testing the Arc Pro B50, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. So I do think it's perfect for a small form factor build like this one I did a few weeks ago. And this was really based around a low-profile RTX 5060. A really great performer, and when it comes to the CPU, I opted to use the AMD Ryzen 8700G because it's a 65-watt part. It's still based on AM4, 8 cores, 16 threads, but uh, with a setup like this, it does perform really well. The case I'm using is the John's Bow NV10. Love the look of this thing, very small form factor. And this case was specifically designed by John's Bow to house a dual slot low profile card around back. Comes with a PCIe riser. I've got a 500 watt power supply here. And with this B50, we don't need any extra power. So I've actually removed that 810 PCIe connector. And yeah, this card actually fits in here quite nicely. With that blower style cooler, it's just gonna blow right out of the back. All of the air is gonna be drawn in from the uh, front side of the card. There is a bracket system here with this case, so the card's not gonna go anywhere. And uh, we've got the panel to go up top. It is a vented panel, so it's gonna get plenty of airflow through this card, especially with that blower style cooler. So yeah, not a bad fit with the NV10 case. And when it comes to the overall specs of the new Intel Arc Pro B50, We've got 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at a 128-bit bus, 16 XE cores, 4 render slices, 16 ray tracing units, and 128 XMX engines. And like I mentioned, the total board power here is 70 watts, but that doesn't mean the chip itself is going to pull a total of 70 watts while we're stressing it out. But now, let's go ahead and move into Windows and see how this thing performs. Jumping right in here, like I mentioned, this system is powered by the Ryzen 7 8700G. Not a high-end CPU by any means, 65 watt part, and that's the real reason I used it in the small form factor rig. I've got 32 gigs of DDR5 at 6,000 megatransfers per second for system RAM. And of course, we've got that Intel Arc Pro B50. 16 gigs of VRAM, doesn't require any extra power like you saw, fits right inside of this case. I'm using the Pro Graphics driver uh, with the Pro version. If I head to Graphics, you can see we've got ECC memory here. So we can enable this, we can disable it, and that's going to be right there on the GPU. That's 16 gigs. So error correction if you need it. I'm going to leave it off for this video. But usually with these art cards, at least B570, B580, got a little bit of performance that we can get out of it. With this, we have nothing unlocked. And I did go through and try an older hack that worked on the first gen art cards with the uh, Acer Bifrost software. Doesn't work on this. I was hoping to get a little more out of it. But uh, real quick, we'll go ahead and put a load on this GPU. And I've got Afterburner up here in the left-hand corner. You can see we're right there at 50 watts draw from this card. Uh, utilization, 98%. And should show us yeah right here okay up to 50 watts and i've seen this boost up to around 57 
so it's a relatively low-powered card. And obviously, with this being an Art Pro, it's really geared towards workstations, and that's why we've got 16 gigs of ECC VRAM here. If you wanted to do some AI workloads on it, yeah, it would definitely work out in a nice little setup. What I've got here is just something really simple. It's um, Intel's AI Playground, and I really like this because if you're just getting into it, this is something that you can download. It'll automatically set up for you. Obviously, you'll have to download the models, but it will do it once you start to either generate your image from here. You can enhance images. It's even got OpenVINO, and I'm going to be using Phi 3.5, but there's others to choose from. You can go with uh, DeepSeq R1 Distilled. This is the one that automatically downloaded for me, so we're just going to use this real quick. And it's actually pretty fast. Let me pull up my task manager, and right here we've got our GPU. All of this is going to be running on the Arc Pro B50. So we'll just go ahead and ask it, how are lithium batteries made? It's going to load that model for us. So uh, Phi 3.5 using OpenVINO. And it's just going to go right to town. So you can see we're over here maxing out that B50. It's going to give us that answer there. You want to do some coding with something like this using a different application or a different model? You definitely could. Another thing we've got is that image generation. And with Intel's AI Playground, I mean, it can be as simple as this. All you have to do, put your prompt in. It'll automatically download that model. Or we've got a bunch of settings that we can mess around with. If you want to go HD, high quality, we can go fast. You can change the resolution. We're going to keep it simple exactly what it downloaded uh, as soon as I installed this. We'll have it generate an image of a deep, dark forest. Well, it, it'll generate several images. I think I've got it set up for like four or five. And you can see, got some GPU utilization generating right there on it. And as soon as the model's loaded in, it's pretty snappy, doing 20 steps here, and the images come out quite nice. And again, this is just a simple use case scenario. If you wanted to use A1111, you want to go with a comfy UI or something like that, totally possible on a system like this. Now, the main reason I wanted to get my hands on the Arc Pro B50 was for gaming in a small form factor unit. If you're into small form factor PCs, you know, we've got a real lack of low profile cards. Really wish this was a single slot, but we've got a low profile dual slot card here. So it comes in a lot smaller than, you know, a full size desktop card. And that's why I was able to put it inside of the super tiny PC here. And I want to mention that I have swapped the driver from the pro driver over to the gaming driver. I'm not sure how much of a difference it's going to make, but uh, I did that just because we're going to be testing some games on this. But the first thing I want to take a look at are a couple benchmarks. And the first thing I tested was some OpenCL performance with Geekbench 6. I was actually expecting a little bit of a higher score here, coming in a little over 73,000. So this is under something like an RTX 4060 for sure. Moving over to 3D Mark with Steel Nomad. Total score here, 1,631, and our FPS was 16.32. And the final one I ran was Time Spy, and we got a total score of 8,376. To tell you the truth, uh, when it comes to these art cards, even integrated art graphics, they usually bench out a bit higher in these synthetics. And just like uh, with that OpenCL benchmark for Geekbench 6, I thought these scores would be a bit higher. But these are synthetics. Now it's time to move into some real world gaming. Since I was here on the bench, I figured I'd go ahead and just film the screen on Cyberpunk 2077. And right now we're at Ultra 1440p. Heading into the settings, and with the Ultra preset, that's going to take XCSS to quality. I do think we're going to need to set this to balanced, at least if we want to do 1440p with this. Because, obviously, if you take a look in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. We're under 60 FPS with it. We're in the high 40s. So we're going to go back in here and just take XCSS to balanced instead of quality. And we'll see how that fares. And I just don't think it's going to be enough to get us over that 60 hump at 1440p with this. Now, another thing we have here is XESS Frame Gen. And I've been a big fan of Frame Gen on all systems, basically. I mean, if you watch my channel, you know I love it on lower end systems. With something like this, I wouldn't mind using Frame Gen, especially XESS Frame Gen with their XESS low latency. And I do believe I'll have to restart the game in order for it to get enabled properly. 
but you've got that low latency frame rate target. I'm going to set that to zero. That's just going to take us up as high as we can go. Okay, so I've restarted the game and we're going to take XESS back to quality with frame gen enabled here. 1440p ultra preset, XESS frame gen. And yeah, this is a really playable experience like this for sure. You can see our VRAM amount is getting close to 8 gigs. I mean, we've got 16 with this, and there are some games even at 1080 that are going to take it up past 10. So having more VRAM here can definitely help out with some titles. But this isn't horrible with frame gen enabled. Obviously, we could take it down to 1080 at Ultra with no frame gen and get a really good frame rate out of it. But I wanted to test 1440, and it does look like we're going to be limited a bit with this setup. Moving back over to my game capture, here's Marvel Rivals at 1440p, high with XCSS set to quality. And it's not horrible, we're right in battle and there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. You can see we do get some pretty decent dips going on, but I never saw it dip under 60 FPS. The next game I wanted to try here was Doom the Dark Ages and I dropped it down to 1080 because it definitely looks like a nice sweet spot. We're at nightmare settings with no XESS, get around 71 FPS on average. Not horrible, and it's really playable like this for sure. And finally, Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, Ultra, no XESS, I'm not using any kind of scaling here, over 100 FPS on average, and I knew this would be the case. Very well optimized game, I mean it works on a lot of different systems, and this Arc Pro B50 is trucking right along. Maxed out with all of these games at 50 watts, and you see our clock can actually boost up to like 2600 on this setup, but the way it's set up, I mean, we're just not getting those really high clocks. Personally, I think I need to spend a little more time with this, and I did mention the Bifrost hack, and on older cards, like the first generation art cards, we were actually able to take the power limit up, even on cards that don't have any uh, extra power connector. We could take the clocks up and, you know, just change the power limit. If there's a chance to do that with this card, I do think that we can get a little more performance out of it. And even just running over that PCIe slot, we're kind of stuck at 50 watts. And if we could up that power limit just a little more, I do believe that we can see a nice little boost in gaming performance with this setup. But of course, I mean, it wasn't designed for gaming. It's for a workstation, AI workloads, and things like that. But either way, I really wanted to get my hands on this, and I'll be spending some more time with it. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this card, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description. That's going to wrap it up for this first look video. Like always, thanks for watching.